folks. We have uh, one, another speaker I've scheduled. Uh, my dad's cousin, Hans Jakobsen, is here. Blood member of the family. Well, he makes his way up here. I want to recognize also that uh, while I'm without a dad now, I'm trying to work on getting Max Overmeyer to adopt me. So, if you're helping with that, I appreciate it. Here's uh, Hans Jakobsen, folks. Tom's day. You know what day it is. But Tom had a special song. And I didn't hear anybody sing it yet. You all know it? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy people, public speaking, I tried to write some notes. I got to thinking about all the experiences we had with Tom as a cousin, and you realize, except for our cousin Katie, I have known Tom longer than anybody else in this room. Oh my goodness. My cousin Katie knew him before I did, but I, I, I knew him before Betty did. Yeah. I certainly knew him before Greg did, and I know Greg, <laughs> I know before Rick, he's little, he's young. Okay. And I got to thinking about all the stuff Tom did, and I got to thinking, how am I going to write something about Tom? So I thought of, you know, before he moved, he had an office. You know where he did his best work? It's also a room he used to record once in a while. Any of you ever get recorded? Well, I went in and I sat down in the, the library, and I started to write. Because Tom always said, they're not through the paperwork's done. <laughs> stick him on me, but uh, these are just reminiscences of Tom as my cousin. Uh, he was a teacher. Always remember he was a teacher. When we would go to their house, it was always to see Tom and Rich. It was Aunt Lorna's house, and Uncle Virgil's outside, but it was always to see Tom and Rich. Who's Rich? Yeah, that, Rich is their little brother right down here. Stand up, Rich. Yeah, we're the oldest parts here now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got to stay at their house a few times because my mom had Thank surgery you. one time in old time. We made a little newspaper. Mrs. Jacobson is ill. And then we wrote the, the Rhapsody in Green because Rhapsody in Blue was a big deal and he played it on his Alto sax. It's totally good. Uh, we had the name for each other that we made up. And we would just laugh and laugh and laugh. And it was grassy. It wasn't offensive. We could say it anytime we wanted. Here. And we would just laugh. Uh, you know, Tom was a drum major at Elma. And he showed us what he was doing. He put on his white uniform. And he put weights around his ankles so he could bend way over backwards. And he could, he could prance. We never saw him at Elma, but we saw him at his house. West Acres. He was an Eagle Scout. Now, let me tell you, an Eagle Scout is really quite something. But uh, he would associate with all sorts of people, and he made them feel like eagles. And when they saw him, that's what they saw. Thank you! Oh, let's see. Oh, my brother reminded me one thing, but before that, I had written down here Columbia boat. Tom got a band together, and they worked on the Columbia boat, and there was another boat. I forget what the name was. The St. Clair, okay, and they actually, they actually played a band and did skits and stuff. They got a summer job working on that boat. And uh, but then at the uh, state fairgrounds, their college fraternity wanted to make money, so they got space there. I think it cost five hundred dollars. That was an astronomical sum back then. And they opened up a hot dog and a French fry place. And he had allergies so bad, but fortunately somebody had invented filter cigarettes and he would bust the butts off the cigarettes and shove them up his nose so he could float through the air. And my older brother Bill over here, he reminded me today, actually he was born after me, but my folks 
understand that at first. When I came home, that's what I remember. He was, I wanted a puppy, but he didn't do too bad. <laughs> but he reminds me that they hired a guy out of prison who was wandering around the fairgrounds because he was used to peeling potatoes. And they got rid of peeling potatoes. No way! They, they, they hired, they hired a, a, a guy out of prison who was used to doing potatoes. Now, Tom would talk to everyone and anyone. Thank you. Just look around at the people you're standing next to. Just look at all Look at them. Have you ever seen a more desperate, not desperate, desperate group in your life? I mean, you know, this is really quite something. And everybody was related at the time, whether you liked it or not. That's what he did. Um, now, when, when, when you were uh, just think, Tom used to put out statements or questions or little jokes, and that was the bait. That's when he would reel you in and watch the discussions and watch the talking and watch how things were going on, trying to figure out what you really believe. Do you know? Anybody listening? I hope not. Tom was a closet Republican. <laughs> The way he dealt with people, the way he controlled people. We knew about the people of town. We were here, we remember the, the, the porch upstairs. We remember West Acres and all the fun out there. It was really quite something. We had a good time. Did you ever, did you ever see a Democrat carrying a communist flag? No? Well, I'll tell you, Tom had a pontoon boat and he had a four foot by six foot. Russian flag, and he would sit across Ford Blake with that <laughs> flag. Way there, everybody. And my typical Americans, no one knew what the hell flag it was. You know, that was unreal. You know. He had other flags, too, like Czechoslovakia, and some Polish ones with two heads, but the Russian flag, that was, that was a red red, that was something. No one else went for a ride with the red flag, you better remember, huh? Well, let's see here. Oh, he had business cards, too. Anybody have a business card that says, Commissar of, of, of uh, Propaganda? Yeah, you got one? You got one? Fantastic. There's something to remember. Will be here. If you remember, then they are much older than I. Oh, yeah. Mr. Dutton, look at it. He was always a drum major, leading, sometimes from the rear. But he always got you to do what he wanted you to do. Oh, yeah. And uh, everybody here uh, was taught by Tom in one fashion or another. Because he was a commensurate teacher. We learned that. Now that's just a cousin's, a cousin's view of Tom. It's all too short. Sometime you're making chocolate chip cookies, give me a call and I'll come tell you some more. But uh, in total, we all knew our parts of Tom. And all these pieces were Tom. He was always teaching us in some fashion. Now, this page is blank, so now you guys can all step up and fill in your part of Tom's memory. Thank you very much. One last thing for Tom, okay?